Vince Neal from Motley Crue joining me now for One Up, One Down. And I actually met you, Vince, back in 2005. We did a piece with Casey Mears at the Charlotte Motor Speedway where right. you got to drive around with Casey at the right. track. I, I, yes, I remember that. Absolutely. In my, in my uh, tour bus. Yes, that's absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. And we got to go see the concert. It was so cool to kind of see those two worlds collide because I'm a huge rock fan. I'm a huge fan of yours and Motley Crue. And, and obviously the racing world is something that you are very, very passionate about, right? Yeah, I love it. I, you know, when I was growing up, I, I was racing go-karts and I raced uh, Formula Fords for a little bit. And then uh, uh, just uh, uh, some Indy Light races. And so, yeah, you know, I, I got to know a lot of the drivers and I had a great time. And I mean, I don't miss it on TV, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what's, so you raced at Phoenix in the Indy Lights, right? Is that the, is that the one oval that you did? No, I did uh, um, Milwaukee. Also. Okay. Milwaukee Mile. What's it like in those cars? And then kind of, you got the experience in the stock car as well. Well, those cars, those Indy Light cars back then were really tough to drive because um, it was flat bottom, so you had to manhandle those cars around. I mean, it, your hands and arms hurt every time you moved, and it was manual shifting, you know, down there. There's no, no paddles. Um, they were tough, but they were fun cars. So what's behind you? Is this, is this your house? Do you have all these, these racing suits at your house? Yeah, this is uh, our home office in uh, Nashville. So, yeah, I got, I got, uh, can't see it, but I got uh, Al Jr.'s uh, IndyCar suit, um, Rusty Wallace. Awesome. Little Kurt Busch over here. Uh, uh, Michael Waltrip. Scott uh, Dixon? Kevin, or? This, yeah. this is Kevin Harvick. Mm -hmm. um, Carl Edwards, Denny Hamlin, uh, Al Jr. I mean, no, um, uh, I mean, um, Oh, there's, okay. Well, it's Richie Hearns. Uh, oh, that's awesome. drove, used to drive the Budweiser, Budweiser uh, Indy car and Dale Jr. right here. So, yeah, and the, I, I wish I could show you, but I have a, I, uh, I bought a, uh, um, the 1995 Winston Cup that Jeff Gordon won. Really? The, the car? The, no, no, no. The, uh, the trophy. Oh, oh, my gosh. Where do you have yeah. that? I have that right here, right beho behind me. That's so cool. It's a, yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, it's um, back then with Winston Cup, I guess they, they gave out three trophies. One to the driver, one to the, the team, and then one to the sponsor. And so this was, this, I bought DuPont's uh, trophy. What are so, some of the big races that you've been to? The big races? I mean, I've been, you know, Brickyard, uh, Daytona a few times. Um, uh, I've been to the... Uh, well, the uh, Circuit of, Mer of America. Um, I don't know, Long Beach. Long Beach has That's always cool. been a, a, a fun one. That's you know, and I heard that they're trying to put a track out here in Nashville, do a street yeah. course, for, and uh, hopefully that happens. That'll be, that'll be great, right in your backyard. A another thing that we have in common, Vince, and, and I didn't actually realize this until recently, is that you're a Miami Dolphins fan. How in the world does a West Coast boy <laughs> become a Miami Dolphins fan? You know, it was back when... when uh, um, LA didn't have a team. They were in between teams back then. And I was going to, to back and forth to Miami a lot. And so I met, started going to the football games out there and I met Dan Marino, which I was like totally starstruck. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, a lot of the players uh, out there and they started hanging out and I just became a, real, a really big fan. So I'm excited about, you know, the drafts that they got, the, 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 new, the new season. So when it starts. Yeah, Tua, yeah, Tua is, a, is a big get for the Dolphins. I know a lot of people down there are really excited about seeing what he can do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So what have you been up to during quarantine time? I'm sorry? What have you been up to during this quarantine time? Um, you know, we, we live on, a, you know, on a, uh, a ranch out here, so it's, it's been pretty good. It's been, you, know, you can ride horses and shoot guns and... You know, and I'm waiting for my simulator to get here. So. I heard this. You to get in the eye racing and start doing some simulator stuff? Absolutely. It was pretty cool because uh, um, uh, this guy, Josh, that works with, with, uh, with, Har with Kevin Harvick, um, I was telling him that I wanted to get a simulator. He was like, I think I can, I can hook you up. So I talked to the guy, and then I get a, a text from uh, Kurt Busch. And Kurt goes, uh, uh, hey, bro, are you getting a, I heard you're getting a simulator. And I go, yeah, how'd you know? He goes, well, Dell Jr. told me. And I was like, I guess word just goes around. 
That's so, awesome. Uh, yeah, those guys are having a lot of fun on those rigs right now. Yeah, yeah. It looks like a lot of fun. I didn't miss any any of the races. You know, um, um, I really liked it that, you know, the competition was like really racing. It was it was pretty cool. So I can't wait for mine to get here. Yeah. When do you think it's going to be there? We'll have to watch for your name to pop up when uh, when they're racing. Absolutely. I, the guy that's making it, uh, he's in, in Oklahoma, and he told me that he's really good friends with, with, with Dale Jr. And uh, uh, he said that, that uh, Jr. is going to put together a celebrity race oh, God. At, some, at some point. So I got to get some uh, seat time in. I'll be great. Uh, obviously, the, the stuff that's been going on right now with this pandemic, it's, it's certainly changed a lot, like with racing, as we just mentioned, and with you guys, right? I mean, you guys are getting ready for the stadium tour. My tickets are sitting inside my room right now because I have tickets to go to your concert when you guys come here to Charlotte. Uh, how are you kind of moving forward? Obviously, I know nothing has been um, determined and, and everything's kind of a day-by-day -day thing. But personally, how are you moving forward with, uh, with just kind of planning for if this is going to happen or not? Well, I can't really do anything. You know, I can't, I can't go out and sing to keep my voice in shape or anything like that. So it's just, you know, just keep kind of working out, you know, in the gym and, and kind of getting ready for that. Um, uh, we're going to get the, the announcement on uh, June 1st uh, from Live Nation, who's doing the tour. Um, June 1st, they're going to announce what's going on. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping we can start in like August and then, you know, it'd be great. I mean, for me, it'd be great if they just took the front, the June and July shows and put them towards the end. Yeah. Um, but now it, if football starts up, it might be kind of hard, you know, yeah. because and now, because we're in football stadiums and baseball stadiums, but um, who knows what's going to happen? You know, I, I mean, worst case is, uh, you know, they'll move it till next summer. What's that like for you? I mean, you're a performer, right? I mean, that, that stage is, is where, you know, you, you do it all and, and it's, um, it's sort of where you get your uh, your power and your inspiration. What's it like to not be able to do that right now for you? It's tough. This is the longest I've ever in my life. Well, since I was 16, not sang. I mean, because it's been it's been months. You know that I we I, we, we self self uh, quarantined like two months ago, and uh, and they kind of stopped the concerts a little longer than that. So I've been really sitting around for like three three months, three and a half months for with no singing or, or, or anything. It's, you know, it's not like singing in the shower, you know, you can't really practice that way. No, so you're not doing anything. You're, uh, do you take vocal classes? Do you have a coach? Like, do you work on anything? No, my voice, uh, that kind of stuff messes my voice up. I gotta go out there and sing hard and rough and, and, and that's, that's, that's what keeps my voice in shape. Well, that's what we love about you. That's what we've loved about you since, uh, for, for three, four decades. Uh, Vince, uh, what inspiration, I want to know, for the tour, like what inspiration did you guys pull from for this tour? Because you guys have kind of gone through different phases uh, with Motley Crue. So are we going to see like old Motley? Is this a, a, a rebirth of Motley? Like what are you guys looking at? I don't know. I mean, we, it, it's funny because we just all kind of show up and we go, and we all fit together, you know, because we don't, we don't sit down and say, okay, Nikki, you're going to wear this and Nick, you're going to wear this, Tommy, you're going to wear this. Tommy doesn't wear anything anyway, really. So um, <laughs> he just sits shorts usually. But um, we just kind of, we have our, our, our different designers and we go out and, and design what we want that's going to feel comfortable. Um, you know, because it's a, you know, the stadiums are a big stage. You got to, it's a lot of running and, and, and it's got to be comfortable. You know, so the days of like the thick leather pants, those days are gone. <laughs> so. Um, you know, but it, it'll look cool. You know, we'll, we'll look cool. That, that's for sure for a bunch of 60 year olds. <laughs> I can't believe that. Yeah, we were actually, uh, my husband and I were talking about that yesterday. We, we were looking up, obviously we're not young anymore either, but it's, it's crazy to think 60 years old, you guys are going to go out there and do this again. Uh, you mentioned the leather pants. Were they actually ever comfortable to run around in the, the thick leather pants? No, those leather pants at the beginning were like, they just stretched out, you know, and you couldn't, you'd sweat in them and you can't really dry them. So you're getting back in wet pants the next day. It was, um, it was a nightmare. And I actually found those pants. And I guess when I put them away, like, you know, a couple decades ago, it was, I didn't, uh, I didn't fold them or anything. They, I just kind of threw them in a, in, a, in a wardrobe case. And I found them and it was like a ball. It was like a, just a leather ball of stuff stuck together. And uh, so those things were, we were ruined. 
those things belong in a museum somewhere, Vince. You know that, right? I mean, those are like, that's like an art. That's like art right there. <laughs> <laughs> I should get them, hang them, frame them, hang them on my wall or something. There you go. Like with your fire suits. I have a couple of questions before I let you go. Um, what's the best group that ever opened for you guys? That opened for us? Yeah. Jeez, uh, I mean, like Guns N' Roses opened for us. Um, uh, I was going to say the Stones, but we actually opened for them. So would that be the best band that you ever opened for? That was the, I mean, that was, well, the Stones was pretty amazing to open for. And then uh, in 1984, it was us, Van Halen, with, 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 with Dave Lee Roth and ACDC. And we did uh, soccer stadiums throughout Europe. That was fun. That's amazing. What song do you most like to sing? I mean, I love Home Sweet Home because everybody knows the words and everybody sings. Sometimes they're louder than I'm singing. I can't hear myself. I just hear the, the audience. And um, But like Girls, 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 uh, Wild Side, those, those songs are, you know, like Dr. Feelgood, when the, the crowd first hears the dum da dum 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 they know they he goes wild because they know it's Doctor Feelgood. So those songs are those songs are really a lot of fun. You know what's crazy about concerts? I, I saw Guns N' Roses recently. It's like back in the day we were all dancing around, moshing and stuff, and now everyone's just standing around taking videos with their cell phones. It's such a different vibe nowadays. Yeah, uh, it was back in the day. It's it's certainly different. Okay, final question: uh, What music do you listen to when you're working out or or just kind of hanging out at home? Well, like if I'm hanging out by the pool, I listen to, believe it or not, I like the, the Gypsy Kings. I don't know if you know who they are. They're, uh, them. yeah, but I, I like the oldies. You know, I like, uh, uh, like on my Pandora, you know, it's like the Creedence Clearwater Revival Station, you know, oh. so. <laughs> I guess I do, I'm too much little, little country out here in Nashville. I do like Mamas and Papas uh, radio on Pandora. I like that one. Or the Doors radio on Pandora. Yeah, Doors radio is great too, yeah. I like those. All right, I, I lied. I have one final question. Uh, the movie The Dirt, everyone obviously reconnected with Motley Crue. Different generations now kind of appreciate what we have all appreciate for so long. What part of that movie did you most connect with? Um, I mean, I, it was, it was a really good movie. I, I had a blast watching it. I was, it was, I was pleasantly surprised that it actually kind of really stuck to the book. And, um, but like the part when I lost my daughter, you know, really got to me and, and just like the, the, the way we started, you know, and, and our first shows, um, you know, it was fun to, to kind of revisit that, you know, and think about it and go, yeah, that was, a, that was a lot of fun back then. Did you guys like contact each other or watch it together or talk about it afterwards, like immediately after you watched it? Well, each guy actually went to different screenings because I like uh, Nikki and Tommy were in LA and I, I wasn't. So they saw a screening over at Netflix and I went um, and saw it at Netflix. But what we did is we had a, a like a movie premiere in, uh, in LA and uh, all four of us, you know, watched it together. And that was, that was a lot of fun. Awesome. Hey, Vince, I, I really appreciate the time. Again, I, I hope to see you on stage and I hope to see you at a race sometime. In the absolutely. Year. Absolutely. Well, uh, yeah. hopefully we'll see you in Charlotte. All right. And, and on the iRacing, watch for Vince Neal coming on an iRacing rig. Your yeah, way. there you go. Maybe you'll be racing against me sometime. There you go. Good luck. Thank you so much, Vince. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. For the best access, perspective, and personalities in all of sports, follow us at Fox Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. For more great NASCAR on Fox content, subscribe to our channel. It's somewhere right around here.